So I'm sure by now you've seen OpenPilot's laneless model performing well in a variety of scenarios. On my own channel, I have plenty of content showing it working on interstates, on highways, on roads like this without any lane lines whatsoever, and it seems to perform pretty well. But one thing I'm going to do today to try to test the laneless model and the model itself and see how well it performs and maybe talk about ways that it will eventually improve from this is to force it to make a decision. So here we have a side street with no lane markings that comes to a fork in the road. So we're going to drive straight on and see what OpenPilot does in this area. Place your bets, what do you think will happen when we drive straight into this fork? So here we go, OpenPilot's engaged and it's going forward and at the last minute it does make the turn. Not ideal, it's in the wrong lane, it's on the wrong side of the road as it makes this curve, but it does seem to eventually correct itself. And now you can see as we're going forward, it's on the right side of the road and this is actually a little loop. And up ahead you can see there's a car parked. So let's see what OpenPilot does here. It actually drifts over and avoids the parked car. But now once again, we're a little too tight in this corner. It's turning well, but if we met an oncoming car, we would have to take over. But you can see here again at the end, it seems to move over to the right side of the road and get into the right kind of position that a human would drive. So I thought this was really interesting how OpenPilot handles this scenario without knowing where to go. It doesn't have any navigation policies yet, so it's just really guessing. It's like if you put someone in your car and told them to drive you somewhere, but then you never gave them any directions. Here we can see the map view of OpenPilot doing the same route. So the idea with Navigate on OpenPilot hopefully will be to train the model to be able to actually look at this basic map data and understand where it's going. I think once Kama starts training with map data, just basic 2D map data, and has navigation routes set up, it will help the model uh, in situations like these forks in the road where it will know okay I'm at a fork and I know which direction to go instead of just generally driving straight until it sees something actually contextually and decides to make a decision on its own. So let's look at another example. Here I'm at kind of a complex intersection. It's very wide so it's hard to really see the other ends of it and we have a lead car. So we're in technically the straight lane. The left lane is a turning lane, the right lane is a straight lane as well. And we're just gonna see what OpenPilot does here with a lead car and the rest of the scene is kind of context. And you can see it manages to cross the intersection just fine and follow the car that was in front of it. No issues whatsoever. So now let's go back and go back through the intersection a second time with another lead car that does something slightly different and see how OpenPilot reacts this time. So now we're coming through the exact same intersection again. We're getting into the straight lane again and we're engaging OpenPilot and we're following this lead. But he has his turn signal on so he wants to turn out of the straight lane with traffic and you can see the OpenPilot decides it's going to turn too. And what's interesting is it doesn't just follow the lead, it goes into the center lane, which I guess technically would be correct, and you saw everyone else went from the inside lane all the way to the outside, because this is an interstate on-ramp, so it's kind of common for this kind of erratic behavior. So the same intersection, two totally different decisions from the laneless model, just based on context, but it's not just entirely following whatever car's in front of it, you can see it still made a decision to switch into a different lane. So what can we take away from this? I think one of the next big improvements to OpenPilot will be Navigate on OpenPilot. 
Training the model to use just 2D maps to understand that additional context of where to go when it comes to an intersection, I think is going to be a huge benefit to OpenPilot. And OpenPilot won't be able to handle these complex intersections without uh, knowing where to go. And the laneless model is a great foundation. Now it just needs a little more context to be able to handle these a lot better and be more predictable and I think we're going to see a lot of big improvements in the future when this stuff finally gets implemented into OpenPilot and it's going to be probably one of the big selling points for the comma 3 with the navigation. Alright so that's the video guys I hope you enjoyed and if you were paying attention you might have noticed that I got a new vehicle it's a 2021 Highlander and so far I've really been enjoying it. It's got about 300 miles on it and I drove it straight home and installed OpenPilot. Install was super smooth, had no issues, but I plan on doing some more videos on the Highlander specifically and what I plan on doing with it in OpenPilot, so stay tuned for that, as well as one comparing its TSS 2.5 to OpenPilot in its current form. So. If you're interested in things like that, uh, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.